Hey everyone, UAV Works here, and today we're going to be talking about how to make your own tricopter. This video will cover everything from scratch, so if you're a beginner, this video is beginner friendly. Now, to get to our building, we need to first go over the materials that we're going to need. So, here, as you can see, is a tricopter frame. Obviously, you're going to need this. So, this frame was built by me, and um, it's, right now it's not commercially available. It's designed after the FPV manual Delrin kit, which costs about $94. You guys are welcome to go on Google and search up FPV manuals and buy your own frame if you like to. You can make it out of wood, plywood, probably eighth inch is uh, the thinnest I would go. You really want some structural integrity in your frame. Um, I'll put the plans in the description box below so you'll be able to print them out and cut it to your liking. Um, something I want to mention about this frame is that I have my own protector frame. Now look at that, UAV works. Uh, Paragon MK2, I, that's just what I named the second generation tricopter. I'll show you my first generation tricopter a little later, just so you can see what my first build was like. Anyway, this uh, protector frame is not only serving its purpose by displaying UAV works, but also, as you can see, a protector for my flight control. So I stick this flight control down over here, crash upside down, boom, nothing's going to happen to it because of this nifty little protector frame. If you guys want this frame, uh, I could probably machine it, but I would need to know how many people are interested. So if you want a, a frame for maybe about, I would say, 25 to $30 shipped, uh, if you want a set of that, let me know. The next thing you're going to need is obviously your flight controller. Now for beginners I would suggest one of these two KK boards. This one is a little cheaper than the one with the LCD but the LCD one has accelerometers as well as gyroscopes which means that it could self level. Right now to be honest the self leveling algorithm is not very good for this board so you, you would pr probably get around the same stability if you go with either one so why not just go with the cheap one until a better code is released for self leveling the third thing you're going to need is your servo now let me zoom in on this I would recommend a Metal Gear digital servo just because you're going to be straining the servo a lot from your yawing. I would not recommend nylon gears or uh, the 9 gram servos. You're going to wear those out very quickly. And the yaw is an important part of the tricopter. So go with something expensive. This is going to be linked in the description below. It's about $20, but trust me, you really want a good Metal Gear servo. The fourth item you're going to need, or fourth group of item you're going to need, is the speed control. And you need three of these. For beginners, I would suggest Turn the Turner G Plus, which I will also link in the description below. Um, for more advanced users like myself, I go with the F20As from Hobby King. These are the 20A amp um, ESCs manufactured by Hobby King. What I do is I take the heat shrink apart and then I put a little programmer to these pads you can see right here. And then I flash the firmware so it's multi rotor compatible. Now, the plushes, you don't have to do this because they're compatible right out of the box. And just to mention, You could probably get these frames online. I bought this off of another member when I didn't have my own CNC or my own cutting machine. Um, 
when you don't have your own coating machine, it's much better to buy these fiberglass plates off of um, other people who have CNCs just because they're much more sturdy, can last a long time, and unlike wood, it doesn't warp or do any of that stuff. The next thing we're going to talk about is a radio system. For beginners, I would just suggest going to stock, but for more advanced users, I would suggest going to FR Sky module if you have the turn G system. The arms are also an uh, important part of multi-rotors, especially for our tricopter purposes. Um, these are pine dowels. They're half inch square dowels made out of pine. Yes, I did say pine. It's wood. Why? Because wood is a good vibration isolation um, material. Now, uh, if you go with something like aluminum, the motor vibration is just going to travel right down the dowel. With wood, you don't have to worry about that as much. And also, it's cheap and readily available. I mean, just go to your local lumber yard and pick up some of these. Very cheap. And also, in the crash, these break and they absorb the energy of the, or impact of the crash so it doesn't damage your electronics. You're also going to need a bag of bees, which is landing gears from Hobby King. And we'll be making our yaw mounts out of these. Very cheap, $2 and you can make two yaw mechanisms out of one bag of these. So again, the product linked will be in the description and go check them out. The final thing you're going to need are these and these are just M3 screws. You could get them anywhere, really. I will link, uh, I'll put a link in the description below of uh, the Hobby King screws, which is what I have over here. So in addition to what I mentioned, I forgot to say that you also need um, these wires. And uh, over here, I have written down the length that you need to cut your wires down to. Now, wires are pretty cheap, so you can get a pack of Hobby King I usually get enough to last me quite a while as you can see here <sighs> I don't know how I'm going to find the beginning lead oh there's one right I think it's right there so let's try to take this out without making a big mess now I'm going to measure the length of the wire so that I have things consistent and cut out. So for the front motor, um, the lengths are going to be 28 centimeters. I will have this down in the description below. So you guys could get these cut. So now after you're done cutting these wires, you want to strip them. I use these automatic wire strippers. As you, as you can see, they're not too consistent, but when they work, they do work. Now that with the wires all stripped down. I want to go through my soldering iron and show you guys what I'm using. Uh, this right here is a Hakko or Hakko. I don't know, it depends on which part of the world you're viewing this video from. Um, but it's a Hakko FX888 I think. And um, I'm using a chisel tip just because it's better for taking off the wires from the ESCs. I will show you guys how to do this as soon as my wire, hot, hot iron uh, heats up. Now that the irons all heat up, um, I'm going to solder the wires, the three motor wires. I'm going to 
from the ESC to the motors. And uh, as you can see right here, I keep a can of compressed air around so that um, when things get too hot, I can just flip this over and uh, spray it down. The thing, the I think it's compressed carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide inside is actually makes for uh, a very good coolant. So these three wires are going to go on here. But the first thing, first thing we need to do is um, desolder these. For this process, I'm actually going to come over here and grab this. This is called a helping hand. If you're new to the hobby, you probably don't know what this is, but uh, they're your best friend for soldering, anything related to soldering. What it does is uh, you can kind of just put it right there and it holds down your wires, or in this case, our ESC. So I'm gonna just tin my tip, place my tip onto here, and just melt the solder on the wire here. You don't want to keep your iron on here for too long because it's not very good for the ESCs. So you want to just touch it and go. For me, just the speed of the process, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna spray this down with um, the liquid carbon dioxide. Um, because if you do too many of these, it's not good. Or you, if you keep your iron on for too long, it could burn up the circuitry. So, done with one wire. Now, let me move this up a little bit just so you guys can see better, hopefully. Yeah, okay. Um, so, again, tin my tip a little bit. Bring it over here. Add a little bit of solder. Pull it right off. Um, one thing you want to keep track of is um, how good the solder joints look. If it's muddy, that's not good. Yes, you sh should have a shiny kind of um, solder joint. So if you guys mess up, you want to redo it. Now I'm just going to add a little solder onto here. Bring it back around. Cool, now that we have those three wires off, I'm just going to spray this down a little bit. Okay, now it's very cool. I'm just going to bring this up here and hopefully show you guys. Come on, focus. There we go. All right, so as you can see, the wires are off. Um, and everything is ready to go. For the next step, what you're gonna need to do is set your ESC aside, take your three stripped wires, and refocus. And what you're gonna do is uh, tin them. So, just kind of twirl it, make a nice um, straight, straighten out the wires a bit so you don't have fray wire, which is never good. Um, let's put this over here. Now, I'm going to hope that you guys could see So, it's very awkward having to work with a camera. 
in front of your face, but I'm going to attempt it anyway. So what you do is you put some solder on to the iron and then you touch the iron on the uh, wire and then you should be able to feed solder right into the wire. A good joint is very important here so you do want to take your time. As you can see right here, let me focus. No, no, that was good before. Uh, come on camera. As you can see right here, the wire is nice and tinned. There's a tin all around the wire. You do see a one frayed strand there, but it's all right. Now repeat this for the next three wires. A few frayed wires, but uh, I think we'll be all right. Okay, so now we want to put the wires on. Let's do this. So what you want to do is you want to place the uh, wire on top of the solder pad and just gently touch your iron to it. It may take a while to melt the solder, but once you get it in, you'll feel it. Let me get a little more solder on here. So that, that was a pretty good joint. Um, repeat this process for the next few wires.